Hey going guys, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. Today is part two of our bay line repair. If you missed part one, there'll be a link in the description below. Go check that out. That's where we disassembled the bay alarm and gouged off all the broken material and machined up our two new hollow bars. So now what I need to do, I need to get the hollow bars set up in the jig and everything back in alignment so I can then start welding out the bay alarm.
Right, so we've got everything back in place now. We've fitted our hollow bars. We've got all the measurements right, so everything's sitting nice and good. I've gone through and put a single pass through all the joints just to hold everything together. So what I need to do now, I need to preheat the joints, go through and weld them out. Something I will need to keep in mind is I am now sealing those bits of hollow bar off so they will become a pressure vessel. The heat is gonna cause the pressure inside to build up and uh, have been known to explode. People have been hurt, people have been killed by doing such things. To reduce the risk of an explosion, I'm gonna move around the bar doing different joints so I don't build up a lot of pressure in there and things don't become dangerous. The reason I'm not gonna drill a small hole to relieve the pressure in the hollow bars is that becomes a weak point. You don't wanna go and add a weak point to something that is already under a lot of pressure when they're working. Rather than drill a hole in it, make a weak spot, I'm just gonna take my time welding it out and make things safer. So the filler material I'm gonna be using for welding out the joints on the bail arm is Hobart XL525 in a 1.2 or an 045, and the gas combination will be an Argo Shield Heavy, which is 80% argon, 20% CO2. Be running that about 23 and a half volts and about six meters of wire a minute. Right, guys, I'm gonna let this cool down a little bit. Everything is getting really, really hot. I don't know how much pressure is built up in the hollow bars, but I'm not gonna test my luck. So I'm gonna let this come down a little bit so where I can actually touch it and leave my hand on it. 
and then I will go back and continue the welding process, but for now I'm going to let this come down a little bit in temperature. Right, guys, so before I go any further with the welding, I need to get these sleeves in place to cover that weld joint. So I'll quickly ground off any high spots there. Now I just need to drive the sleeves to where they belong and then I can complete the welding. Right, guys, so all the welding is now complete. The bail arm is cooled down. So you might have noticed I did weave passes around all the joints. A big weave pass over the top was basically just to fill it in so I've got something to grind away because I will be blending all of this back into the original castings. We'd like our repairs to look as genuine as possible. So blending everything in really, really nicely is going to look fantastic at the end of the job. So I'm not going to grind it here in the workshop. That's just a lot of unnecessary dust getting around inside the building. I am going to pull it out of the jig. I'm going to flip it over. I then need to do a crack test on this ear that we repaired. 
I need to put the stop plates on and then I need to do the line boring. So after all that's complete, I'll take it outside and grind everything up. Righto guys, so I'm just going to perform a quick crack test on the end of the bar that I had to straighten in the press. So I've never actually had one crack and I believe that is because I heat it before I try to press it straight. If you were to attempt to press this cold, I guarantee you to get a crack in it. But just to be certain, I'm going to crack test it anyway. So what we're going to be using is our four step dye penetrant testing kit. So you have a pre-cleaner that you use to clean the part before you go and add your penetrant. So your penetrant is a red dye, you spray that on, let that sit for 10 to 15 minutes, depending on outside temperature, it will have to go longer if it's cold. You then use the remover to remove any of the excess penetrant that you've put on there. And 
and then after that's dried off you then put on the developer. The developer comes out basically white and it will draw the penetrant through it to expose any cracks. Right, so as I thought, there are no cracks. People often ask, what does a crack look like once you use the dye penetrant? Generally, it'll be a white background and you will see the red penetrant coming through the white background. If there is a very fine crack in there, you will actually see little dots of red coming through it. So if there's a crack there, you're gonna be able to expose it providing you've cleaned everything and done the four-step procedure correctly. That's really good, I'm happy with that. Now we can set up the line bar. So I've actually had to pull all the line borer and the setup back off the bail arm. I noticed it was cutting a lot more out of the bottom than the top of the hole. Something has moved during the setup. I'm not too sure what it was. If I had to let that run the way it was, the bail arm wouldn't have been sitting square on the machine. It would have been slightly kicked up on one side. So it's a good thing we caught it. Fixed all that up, put the line borer back up. Now we can start boring out the hole again. So we've done our cleanup cut. I took out as minimal material as possible because there wasn't a great deal of damage in there. There is one little area in there that didn't quite clean up. That little area is no big deal. I can quickly run a die grinder through that and just clean off any of the surface. So I got a nice clean area to weld to. So now it's ready for welding. I'm not gonna be using the bore welding attachment for the line borer to build up that bore again. I'm gonna do it by hand. And the reason I'm gonna weld it up by hand is there is a grease port in there and I don't wanna cover it over with weld because I can't actually get to it from the other side in order to drill that port back through. So you would need a eight mil drill bit about 350 mil long to reach that hole. Rather than go through all that, I'm just gonna weld it up by hand, set up the line bore and then we can bore it out. around the outside. That'll do. <clears throat>
Righto guys, so I've got all the line boring completed. What I need to do now, I need to take it outside and we're gonna grind all the welds on the bail arm. I'd rather do the grinding outside so there's no grinding dust here in the workshop. Righto guys, so we've got all of our welds ground down. I've wax and grease removed the entire thing. We've got the bearing installed. I've taped up the one pin that's still in there. There's one last thing I need to do. I need to give this a paint job. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use an etch primer to etch prime the entire bail arm. Once that goes off, I'll come back with some new cat yellow and I'll give it a coat of paint.
Right on guys, so the bail arm is now 100% complete. It came up looking amazing with a coat of paint. Everything blended in really, really nicely. This is the closest thing you are gonna get to a genuine part that's coming from a workshop. Just one thing I wanted to quickly mention, while I was waiting for the paint to dry on the bail arm, I sat down and went through some of my emails. I came across one from a fan in Berlin, Germany. Um, he shared a bit of information that uh, things aren't the greatest at the moment. So I just wanted to say, get well soon, Connie. Everything will be fine, and all three of us are thinking of you. So one of the most commonly asked questions in part one was why don't we use a solid bar material to replace where the hollow bars were? There needs to be a weak link within the bail arm system. If you were to run solid bar instead of hollow, it would probably break something far more important on the front of the machine or it could rip the front end out of the machine. The hollow bar is, I suppose you could call a sacrificial piece of material. So if they do have a collision, it's going to break something that can be replaced. One of the other issues would be weight. A piece of solar bar would be incredibly heavy. There is only one little cylinder that lifts and lowers this. So if you were to replace it with a solid, it would probably end up a little bit heavy and the cylinder probably wouldn't be able to move the bail arm up and down. So that's the job done. It's all strapped down, ready for transport. Our customer is going to be picking this up first thing in the morning. So thanks for watching. Right, I guess so. Oh, fuck, how am I going to start that? What, how am I starting that? So, what we need to do today. Oh, sorry. Right. If you miss that. Oh, fuck me. Oh, oh, fuck. Oh. I'm just going to start again. Okay. Right. Here we go. Yep. Right, I guess so. I've completed the. Oh, I haven't completed. Right, I guess so. Before I complete the weld passes on the two ends. So before I can complete the welding, what I need to do is drive these, these sleeves. Oh, fuck. Right, guys, so I'm just going to perform a quick... Uh, <laughs> what we're going to be using is our four steps. <laughs> so now it's ready to, for welding. Right. So now it's wet... Uh, wetty. <laughs> wetty. <laughs> right. So now it's... Oh, fuck, I'm doing this it again. They will become a pressure vessel with... with oh, fuck me, I'm losing it. So if it is an open crack, it'll be a nice visible red line. If it is a very tight crack... <laughs> Pretty much it. Yeah. <gasps> it's always on this fucking one thing. It's fucking stuck, you fucking. St Oh, no. 